Courtney, is Delta a continuing concern for this market, or do you feel like the markets have already priced that in? Yeah, I mean, the nice thing that we're seeing is the markets have actually just notched their 50th record close for the year, despite the Delta variant, despite everything going on with Afghanistan, and even with waiting for the Fed meeting happening on Friday. So I've been really um, optimistic looking at is how the markets have really been able to look past all of that. And really, they're just pricing in all the economic data, which continues to come in strongly. And ultimately, that's what the markets care about more so than Delta, which I would say is probably more of a health crisis than an economic crisis. You know but, Oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Please continue. Uh, well, just to kind of uh, echo some of your um, some of your topics here, I do think that what we want to look at is where in the markets you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of right now, because there has been a shift from your cyclicals back into your longer duration assets. So things like tech firms, which we're talking a lot about of on this show. But I do think that there is a lot of really good opportunity here when you look at some of your cyclicals, which have only become more attractive here, especially your financials. I think it would be really beneficial to re-rotate back into those sectors right now. You know, we repeatedly said there's been 50 record closes in the S&P this year. I actually asked our quantitative team to give me the number for 2019, I guess the last quote unquote normal year. For all of 2019, there were 35 record closes, just to put that number in perspective. Do you see that kind of momentum continuing and coming up? Obviously, this week we have the Jackson Hole meeting. How do you see that impacting the momentum that we see in the market? Yeah, I mean, what's, what's kind of interesting is that's happening also at the same time that your bearish sentiment is at about a six-month high. So it's kind of um, climbing this wall of worry, so to speak, as opposed to seeing investors be euphoric. You tend to see a market's top when investors are euphoric. So I actually see this as a good sign that investors are still nervous right now. They're very much anticipating this, um, this meeting that's happening on Friday. But I think realistically, a lot of this is already anticipated of what the Fed might be doing and interest rates rising, them decreasing some of their bond purchases moving forward. So I don't really expect that to have as huge of an impact as like, for example, the taper tantrum we saw in 2013. I think there's a lot more anticipated and the markets are really in a good position to be able to handle this and continue to go forward. All right. Well, we teased it just a short time ago, Courtney. What are your financial picks? Yeah, so looking at the financials, um, actually, I know you guys have thrown a lot of really good names out there, but a name that we haven't talked about yet, I think, is Citigroup, which is a really good opportunity here because it's actually trading below its tangible book value. It's trading at really good valuations here, um, paying a good dividend. And as we see the new CEO coming in, I think it's going to be pretty feasible that we can see their return on equity improve, which is only at under 6% uh, right a, now. On City. On City.